Welcome along to episode 15. We just worked out by using all my fingers of the film man and the film fan. My name's Brent. I'm the film fan. I'm here with the owner of Marikana Cinemas, Dan. Hello, Dan. Kia ora. Long time between popcorn, my friend. <laughs> we, we, we were just talking as well before this yeah. and, and, just, and realized that it has been eight months or something since yes. the last one. We haven't done one of these in 2024. I know. However, here we are. Yeah, and bad it's, us. It's um, bad us, <laughs> but it's great to be back um, <laughs> yeah. to, to even consider talking about movies with someone who loves talking about movies. Absolutely. I just want to start off by talking about, wow, this year in movies, it, it, it started out kind of slow, don't you think? But it's really amping up to be what's looking to be a great year to get people back into cinema. Yeah. I mean, how long, how much time have we got today? Oh, we got a couple of hours, we would find. Okay. <laughs> Look, thinking back, seeing as it's been so long since we sat in these, these hot seats and talked movies... January was really disappointing. It was it was a tough month. Usually January should be one of the biggest of the year for us and it sets us up for the rest of the calendar year. And it just didn't really happen. And going to the movies is definitely for a lot of people a luxury, right? It's been a tough year for a lot of people when it comes to um, finances and that does have an effect. The other thing that's had a huge effect on the rollout of films this year were the actors and screenwriter strikes which happened in Hollywood last year those went on for six months you know that puts a huge dent in the rollout of films it didn't really sort of take a huge effect until the start of this year even though they happened last year such as the way that films sort of happened we're still feeling a little bit of that effect now and if we're going to go even further back COVID is still yes. having its sort of tentacles and its the, its effects on the industry unbelievable, so it's unbelievable it? and in March 2025, it'll be five years since. Wow. Okay. Since, you know. Yeah. Mm. So, I mean, the first movie to go past a billion dollars this year was Inside Out 2. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. Wow. Inside Out 2. Yeah. Um, I think what we're seeing at the moment is commentary from people who don't necessarily know how the industry works and that, hey, Inside Out 2 has been huge. It's done nearly one and a half billion dollars. It's a massive figure. Deadpool... And Wolverine has gone past a billion dollars. Cinema industry is really healthy. Yes, it is at times. And the issue we've got at the moment is huge peaks, but really long troughs. It used to be that you'd still have the peaks, but the, the baseline was much higher. So you're sort of riding this quite you know, consistent wave. But at the moment, you've got Everest and the Marianas Trench, you know. <laughs> and yeah. that doesn't help with just keeping the fire burning you know the fire goes out and then you've got to stoke it back up and then so it's really challenging mm. having said that i feel like the back half of this year is actually looking really strong um you can't deny on the other hand the huge success of inside out 2 and the huge success of deadpool wolverine uh, this time last year we had barbenheimer this time two years ago we had top gun maverick so you always have this mid-year peak and those films are because purely the American summer, it's when those big films get rolled out. You always have this sort of mid-year you know, boost, which is fantastic. What I'm seeing coming up is that some of the traditionally quieter months are actually starting to fill out with some really strong titles. Here's looking at you, November. We've got a really strong lineup in November with, um, we've got Red One from Dwayne Johnson and J.K. Simmons. And that looks like a really fun family film from the Jumanji filmmakers. And that's in the first week of November. Then in the second week, we've got Gladiator 2, which by all accounts is great, and it's looking awesome. Ridley Scott, you yes. know, back doing his thing. Absolutely. Uh, no Russell Crowe, but, no. you know, that's fine. Um, in the third week of November, we've got Wicked, which is highly anticipated. And in the fourth week, we've got Moana 2, which could quite possibly be the biggest film of this year. So November, traditionally a little bit of a quiet month in the lead up to our summer. All of a sudden, that's looking really strong. And then as we go into summer, we've got another lineup of really strong films. So I'm, I'm, I am feeling positive, but it's just about making sure that the lower and shoulder weeks and, and seasons are sort of being filled out with films that get people in the door, like Inside Out 2 and Deadpool. We just need more of that. And I think as we start to see a healthier 
writing and actor and and just less impact on people financially we're going to sort of see people come back to the movies because when there's movies that people want to see they come to the cinema yeah i mean to me it seems like there are a lot of movies coming out which is great and just thinking back in my favorite movies of the year so far it's been um, that long right we it's may been well that long about it yeah but i saw uh, kingdom of planet of the apes yeah. now i was really over all the planet of the apes so it just it just didn't appeal to me this one really did and i think it again it goes back to some of the costuming and things that are in there that reminded me of the original show that when I grew up, and when I grew up in the seventies, Planet of the Apes on television. I, mum and dad, I came back from America and brought me back a Planet of the Apes mask, a rubber one. So I was the most popular kid in school, so I'd wear that all the time. Have you still got it? <laughs> yeah, no, I wish I did actually. It's probably worth a fortune now. It was latex rubber, yeah. and it was, it was Galen who was Roddy McDowell yeah. in the original series. But there was just something about this, the way this one was put together. And I think just the, obviously the technology again and all the actors went to ape school and it was a good story and I really enjoyed it. I've I've seen the same kind of commentary. I haven't seen the film around Alien Romulus as well. Oh, yeah. Fitting in between the first two Alien films in terms of the timeline mm. and the director has been given the hard word by Ridley Scott, who was, you know, the director <laughs> of the originals and said, don't mess this one up. Yeah. And he hasn't. He's done a great job of making it feel like it's in that original film universe by doing practical effects and filming it in a way that all the props are from that era. So it's kind of a subtle way of playing on nostalgia. I do actually wonder if some recent sequel failures have actually sort of lit in a bit of a fire under the filmmakers and screenwriters and said, look, we just can't rest on our laurels by just saying, here's the new film from the series and hoping that people come in because if a film's not good, people talk about it even faster these days. You know, the day a film gets released, yeah. it's all over social media. It's not like in the old days where it would take a little while for it to trickle through in newspaper reviews, you know. So you've got to be on your game. And I'm hoping that that is what's happening because it's just great for the industry. Mm. What other films have you seen this year that you really enjoyed? I know one that you're not so keen on, but I, I really enjoyed The Fall Guy. Yeah. I thought it was... Uh, I just thought it was a one of those movies you go along and you don't have to think about anything. And I, I remember kind of briefly some of the series again when I was growing up with Lee Majors because he was a $6 million man. So whatever he was in after that, we'd watch it just because he was a $6 million man. But I, I thought it was good. I mean, it was a, a good marketing for Sydney. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's for sure as far as, hey, look, sure was. here's the Harbour Bridge. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think that, again, talking about the way that audiences behave, everyone thought that film would go mm. really, really well, and it just did not perform particularly well at the box office. So much was put on Ryan Gosling in his first film post Barbie, and everyone, me included, felt like Four Guys going to be one of the biggest films of the year, and it just didn't work. No. Why is that? I don't know. The way that audiences behave is much different than it used to be. Um, so, you know, it's it, word of mouth is, is so important, you know, and I'm not, not quite sure what it was about that film because I liked a lot of it. I didn't like some of it, but I'm not sure what it was about that film because, as you say, yeah, it seemed like a really great yeah, big screen so. yeah. popcorn film, yep. you know, mm. check out at the door and, and just enjoy it, you know. Yeah. So... Who knows? Yeah. What about for you? What were your favourite movies, Dan? Um, well, I just I, I was actually just having a look at my film diary here and... I've got a I've got a handful of films and I've actually seen two of the three which I'm going to talk about um, as advanced screenings that they haven't actually released in cinemas yet. Oh right. So one of them I can't say sort of too much about. Another one's coming up soon, and the other one that I I loved, which is probably my favourite film of the year, and it feels like so long ago mm -hmm. because it released on January the first. Is Poor Things. Oh yeah. Okay. From Yorgos Lanthimos. Um, what a outrageous unusual funny wickedly funny movie definitely an acquired taste uh obviously it succeeded hugely mm -hmm. when it came to the award season yes so from a critical perspective it was received really well some people didn't like it and that's fine because i i really love films that are polarizing i feel like a film that's just bad everyone will say it's bad yeah i feel like a film that people say they don't like but a lot of people say they love i think that's a really good thing because it's not safe filmmaking. Right. It's making people think. It's making people laugh or cry, love it, hate it. I feel like that's where like the essence of 
cinema is at. It's sort of go and see a movie. Sometimes you're taking a risk and you might come out and say, that is the best film I've ever seen and I didn't know anything about it. Yeah. Someone might walk out and go, that is the worst movie I've ever seen <laughs> and then talk to someone who thinks it's the best movie they've ever seen. But it creates conversation around movies. I feel like a blah average movie is that sort of is all things to everyone but is not particularly that great is far inferior to a movie like that i loved it i really did um kinds of kindness as follow-up i i liked not as much as poor things definitely a difficult watch you know yeah. a, a good film that's definitely difficult he's got another one coming out with emma stone in 2025 so i mean let's see how they go with but, that yeah. but his films really do push buttons and i i love that about a filmmaker that takes risks i really do um another film which is coming out on september the 19th is called the substance it's got demi moore returning to the big screen oh really um without saying too much about it go and watch the trailer this film is absolutely batshit crazy it is an absolutely bananas movie and it goes from based in sort of reality to just outrageous it just goes on this crazy arc um the director is a French woman and she has done films before that are crazy as well. And it's taking a premise of, um, you know, when you age in Hollywood, what happens to you if you're a big star? So chasing the fountain of youth using a substance called the substance. Oh, right. And creating a younger version of yourself to remain relevant is very much a a perennial topic in Hollywood, right? Like yeah. the fading star, the aging star, the next big thing. Uh, the next big thing in this film is played by someone who's in Kinds of Kindness and Poor Things. Uh, she's also Andy McDowell's daughter, Margaret Qualley. She's sort of one of the actresses at the moment. She plays the younger version of Demi Moore. Um, it's got so many pop culture references. It's wickedly funny. It's disturbingly gory so yeah. i did actually have to sit in the cinema like this oh no a few times i, I was and <laughs> but the audience i saw with i saw it with were in hysterics yeah um it's definitely not for everyone it will be an r16 rated film but if you can kind of push yourself through some of the more bloody scenes the political and social commentary rises above everything else and the absurdity just adds an incredible angle to it Okay, yeah. substance. The substance. I remember that. I'll go watch the trailer for that one, Dan. I'm intrigued now. Demi Moore's awesome in it, yeah. And she's kind of come back, and there's even people talking about like, look out for Demi Moore come award the awards runs. Oh, good. For this film and comparing it to Kinds of Kindness. Kinds of Kindness is very much grounded in reality. The three yeah. movies in it, you could um, you could imagine happening in real life. And there's one fantastical bit, whereas the substance is absolutely nuts. Like, like an LSD. So 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 you can actually go and just laugh and 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 just live in yeah. the reverence and the absurdity of the film. Yeah. Whereas Kinds of Kindness was a bit like creepy <laughs> because it was actually like, oh, this could actually happen. Oh, no, okay. I don't want that. But we're going to have to do another challenge for you. We have to go and see The Substance. Oh, yeah, no, I will. Yeah. Oh, Demi Moore in here. Yeah, I'll go see it for Demi Moore. I don't, I don't know if I should be recommending the movie to people. <laughs> <but> it... <laughs> the other film which I saw recently at an industry screening, which is going to be coming out later this year, is a film called Tina, and it's a... Um, directorial debut from Mickey Magasiva. He's the younger brother of Robbie Magasiva, oh, okay. you know, household name in yes. acting circles in New Zealand. Mm. Um, it's set initially at the time of the Christchurch earthquakes down in Christchurch. Um, and then the setting moves on quite quickly to three years later. And it's, it's about um, a woman, a Samoan woman, who is trying to deal with grief and she's a substitute teacher, and she gets hired to fill in at one of Christchurch's most elite schools. Um, naturally, this most elite school is is um, there's not so many brown people in the school, so it's this kind of clash of cultures, uh, clash of um, society, clash of middle to lower class and upper class. Um, it's a beautiful film that is genuinely funny at times i was laughing out loud like the humor is not silly dad joke humor it's really witty sharp humor um cried several times in the film you know it was it was teary 
Tina is definitely one of the best films I've seen this year, and even better, it's a New Zealand film. Yeah, Mickey Magaseva has done an outstanding job. Um, so that's definitely one I want people to make note of. Uh, Madman, the distributors, are super excited about the movie. Um, after the film, Mickey was sitting in front of me. I tapped him on the shoulder and introduced myself. Dan from Matakana Cinemas. Hi, Mickey. And he goes, oh, I live in Lee. <laughs> oh, cool. We'll have to do something. Yeah, so we've absolutely. swapped numbers. So uh, be on the lookout for a special screening with Mickey for, for Tina. Um, That'll be great. So those are my three favorite films this year. So Friday the 13th, the Italiano Film Festival. I yeah. said it like I was in The Godfather. I'm sorry. That was terrible. <laughs> I apologize to everybody from Italy for that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> You're not Italian? <laughs> you fool- I know. And like it rolled off the tongue, Dan, I get it. You fooled yeah. me. You fooled me. <laughs> the CIF, as it's known, the Cinema Italiano Film yes. Festival. Yeah. So really excited bringing it back for, I don't know, the seventh or eighth year in a row. Uh, Paolo Rotondo, who's a lovely guy. I love Paolo, um, a familiar face in film and television in New Zealand. He's the director of the festival, and he loves coming up here to introduce the festival on the opening night. He's going to be back again this year. We're going to have some of our favorite things around, you know, Italian food and beverage. We're going to have some arancini for the opening night made by our friends downstairs. We're going to have some Peroni. We're going to have some Italian wine. We're going to have potentially a Lamborghini parked out the oh. front. Excellent. Yeah, Paolo's going to leave it for me after the festival, I've heard. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, it's yours. It's a gift. Yeah, I mean, that, that night's booking out. We're about half sold for that. So, um, you know, even you know a little while out, we've we've still got tickets available, but they are going fast. Yeah. The opening night is always fantastic. Paolo and Matthew do an awesome job of doing the opening of that one. And then it's playing for uh, 10, 10 or 11 days thereafter. Tickets are selling really well. The Italian is slightly more niche festival than the French mm. but you can't deny that the films in the festival this year there are some absolutely incredible films some real gems like I've said in the past about risk taking going to festival movies you might actually find that you've got one of your favourite films of the year uh, festivals I feel like they're great for taking risks why not go and see an Italian film why not go and see a French film you know in the Italian film festival anything that's shot in Italy is going to look beautiful right <laughs> I mean, it's New Zealand winter, right? You know, yeah. and <laughs> yeah. you can, if you've been to Italy before or not, you can sit in your seat and you can dream. Yes. You know, it can take you away for a couple of hours. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Okay, Dan, let's have a chat about what's coming up. This movie, Midas Man, because I love music, I'm fascinated to see this. It looks really good. And I watched the trailer, and what I love in the trailer from the beginning is that they all introduce themselves to Brian Epstein and they go, you know, I'm... Paul McCartney, I'm John Lennon, I'm George Harrison, and then he goes, I'm Pete Best. And of course, everybody's waiting for Ringo to be there, but you know, Pete Best, yep. the forgotten Beatle. Yeah, I know. I mean, I even, just while you're talking about it, I forgot about Pete Best. <laughs> yeah. Everyone thinks of the Beatles drummer as Ringo Starr, right? Mm. I mean, that name too, yeah. Ringo Starr. Yeah, Midas Man, I think there's something in it for quite a lot of people there because the Beatles are just so timeless, right? You know? So many people say they're the greatest band of all time. I would beg to differ, but that's the that's the whole thing, you know. The Beatles are so highly regarded. They're so transcendent. They're so across generations, you know, because of the way that people's listening habits work. You know, people in their teens and 20s love the Beatles. So I think that film has real appeal to people who are either wanting to double down on all their knowledge about the Beatles and just sit back and let it wash over them, and then also people who want to actually learn more about the history and the man behind the band because he really was such a huge influence on how good the Beatles really were. Yeah, because everybody thought that they weren't going to go anywhere, really. That they're just going to be some sort of band that played at the Cavern Club in Liverpool. Played in a uh, little cave in yeah. Liverpool, yeah. <laughs> That's it, so yeah. And and here we are talking about them, you know, and about an, another Beatles movie that's coming out. So really fascinated to see how that goes. Yeah. And there's something that's been added to your website. It's a bit of a tongue twister. Pitch black, playback. Perfect. You nailed it. Well there done. There you go. I've been practicing that for weeks. I know, off, that's ca- good. off camera. That's why we haven't done the podcast, because I couldn't say it. I know, off camera it was a shambles, but you nailed it to camera. <laughs> Pitch black, playback. Yes, yep. I think the mystery's in the title. Mm. But when you know what it's about, the title tells you everything you need to know. Okay. So what do you call that? That's that's yeah. We have I to don't know. That, that sounds technical. We have to look that one up. 
So the the concept is it's actually um, a distribution company based out of the UK. Our friends at the Capital Cinemas in Auckland City have been doing this. Mm -hmm. um, it's where you play a classic album through the big sound system in a theatre with all the lights off and you wear an eye mask and you just sit there and you let the album play from start to finish and let it roll over you. All right. Yeah. yeah. So the first one we're doing is um, Dummy by Portishead. It's the 30th, I cannot believe it's the 30th anniversary of that that album that came out in oh, 1994. Wow, that's a great album though. It's absolutely, it's it's an absolute classic. It still holds up, trip hop classic. Uh, we're also doing Jeff Buckley's Grace a couple of weeks later. Wow. And then we've got another one that's in the works. It hasn't been confirmed, but we're hoping to be doing Massive Attack's Protection, which is also an outrageously good album still holds up it's a classic people still love that record so that one's yet to be confirmed but definitely dummy and grace coming up i think that in this day and age people are very much focused on playlists and singles and scrolling you know sitting back and just letting an album play from start to finish is like going to the movies mm. put your phone down you know turn your phone off to sit there for two hours and don't get distracted by the digital world. Um, I think it's a lost art listening to an album from start to finish. I think sometimes you're taking a risk and listening to a new record from start to finish because it, I think you've got to invest a lot of time in that because often the best records take a lot of repeat listening. Yeah. So why not come and listen to a classic that you know you love and listen to it from start to finish in a cinema? So Dummy's coming up uh, later in the month. And uh, yeah, we've got Jeff Buckley in the mix as well. That sounds good. And it is true because, I mean, growing up for me, we'd hear songs on the radio, but then we'd go buy the album. We wouldn't, it wasn't until later we started buying 45s or Kissingles. Kissingles, kids, it's a cassette. Um, but yeah, we used to buy the albums and do exactly what you say listen to them from the beginning to the end, and you get your favorite album tracks and share with your mates, and away you go. So I think. That is a really great initiative. I can't wait for that. Yeah, it's something we, you know, we talk about no boring weeks from a marketing yeah. perspective here at the cinema as a as a marketing team. And how can we make every week that we're open and programming interesting? You know, festivals, pitch black playback. Yeah. <laughs> school holiday movies, blockbuster releases, art house films. You know, private screenings, private hires, you know, how can we just keep this place engaged, locked into the community, always doing something new, new initiatives, and just keeping it fresh is really, really important to what we do, especially right now when doing business is, is really tough. And hopefully that puts us into a position when things improve and, you know, we're already out of the starting blocks and we can just take the baton and run with it. I've got an idea. Lots of lights, lots of hype. You get kids in here, you fill them full of sugar, and then you play the Wiggles album in its entirety. Okay, please edit that one out, Aiden. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Who brought this guy along? <laughs> Perhaps that won't work. Anyway, just an idea if you're looking for something. That's why I'm not in marketing here at the I was cinemas. just going to say, <laughs> if you're looking for a marketing job on the team, your CV your CV is not correct for one, and, and that, that is not, not a great start to your interview. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay, back to the drawing board. Here's a hot little tip for a film. Going from the UK to the US, I think this film could end up being a lot of people's favorite little movies of 2024. Uh, it's called Thelma. Uh, it's about 93-year-old Thelma Post who gets duped by an over-the-phone scam right. by someone pretending to be her grandson. And when she works out what's going on, it sets off on a crosstown mission to rightfully take back what's hers. Right. Really cute little premise i haven't seen the film myself the reviews are incredible i think last time i looked on rotten tomatoes it was sitting around about 93 94 percent oh wow yeah um and the audience score is super high as well in the 90s so it's not only critics who are saying this film's really great it's the audience that are going and seeing it and going wow that film is awesome so i reckon that's one that would be pretty safe for anyone to go to as a sort of a surprise movie. Hey, we're going to go to the movies. I want to take you along to a film. And one of those ones where I feel like people will go and see it and then they'll walk out and they'll be raving about it and that'll just be get more more people coming to the cinema to see it. I think we can all relate because we've all been scammed a million times a day, right? So. 
a million times a day, maybe. <laughs> okay, that's an exaggeration. Speak for yourself. Maybe 999,000. Speak for yourself. That one's September the 5th. <laughs> Uh, another film that's coming out on September the 5th, which um, you've been waiting eternity for this one, is Beetlejuice. Say it again. Beetlejuice? Yeah, but we can't say it three times. No, that's right. Because that'll be the third film, right? And also, <laughs> someone might turn up. Yeah. Um, look, you know, when we were kids, it was a big film, right? Massive it's a film. big film for us. Michael yeah. Keaton um, was a huge star post that film. He went on to play Batman in 91 and 92. Um, and Michael Keaton is still relevant. Yes. Um, I'm really intrigued to see how this film goes. Mm. Have parents been showing it to their kids and then the kids are hooked, you know, the original film? Yeah. Um, and then they want to come and see the sequel. I think it's got a cast that could potentially help break it at Breakout as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's the original cast, there's Winona Ryder and Michael Keaton. Um, and then Winona Ryder's daughter in the film is played by... Jenny Ortega, yep. yeah, who's, who's Wednesday. Wednesday yeah, the Tim Burton connection, of course, from the TV show. And looking at the trailer, there's a lot of those practical effects in there that it's just reminiscent of the original movie. And I really like that because there could have been that temptation to go, hey, we can CGI and make everything look so realistic. And I just don't think they've gone down that path. But again, you've got to have a good story with it too. So Yeah, I mean, in talking today, is there a little bit of a pushback on CGI at the moment? I don't know. I, th I feel like it's not a bad thing. No, no, I quite like it. Like the, the sandworms uh, in the movie, they were stop motion animation. I think they've done that again. And, you know, stop motion is making a bit of a comeback as well. I, I, I do think, yeah, it just fits in with the look and what you expect from Beetlejuice. If, if you went and they just made it all, you know, so hyper-realistic and great CGI effects. I think I'd be kind of disappointed, to be honest. Now, here's a, tr a question for you that you might want to look up after this. Are the sandworms in Beetlejuice the same sandworms as in June? Uh, no. <laughs> Are you sure? Mm. They look different. There, there, there could <laughs> be some that. inside <laughs> thing going on there in the That's cinematic right, could universe. Be. So there's yeah. something for everyone. Google it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not long after the, the Beetlejuice release date, we're actually getting really close to another set of school holidays. September, October school holidays often, I feel like, a little bit of a, um, a movie dumping ground where the sort of leftovers of the American summer get dropped in. You know, this American summer we've had Inside Out 2, huge hit. We've had Despicable Me 4, huge hit. They often get released in that window and then whatever's left from the American summer that gets sort of released later and which have to stay away from those huge steamrolling behemoth blockbuster films end up in our September, October school holidays. However, I'm really excited about these holidays for the first time in a couple of years. Really strong film lineup. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice will play through into the school holidays. Uh, Transformers 1 is the first time they've done a feature film in an animation style. And if you've seen the trailer, yeah, it looks really fun. It does. It, looks it doesn't good. look too robot, 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 smash them up, you know. And it's a bit of a um, a story about when the two, you know, arch enemies, the classical Autobot Decepticon arch enemies, were actually friends growing up, right? So it sort of it reminds me a little bit of the Ninja Turtles movie that came out last year in the same window, where it's sort of taking it back to when the characters were younger. Uh, I'm not a huge Transformers fan, but I certainly know there is a huge amount of kids and adults out there that are <laughs> yeah. actually really excited about that movie. We've also got Harold and the Purple Crayon, which is a big screen adaptation of the famous book. So that's one for the school holidays, especially for the really young kids. Definitely one to look out for. Zachary Levy plays the 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 real world uh, Harold in that movie, um, and it sort of it starts off drawn. Right. And the movie sort of pops into real life. So um, that one looks really fun for the for the young families. The, f the, the film I'm really excited about for the school holidays, also based on a really famous book, is The Wild Robot. Oh, that looks good. So if you haven't seen the teaser trailer and the trailer, either don't check it out, which is my style. I don't like to watch trailers before I see movies. That's really hard to do, but I try not to watch too much. Yeah. But I have actually seen the first 15 minutes of the film. Oh, right. And it is absolutely stunning so i i really feel like that's the breakout film of that holiday period it will definitely be one that 
parents will take their kids to and the parents will be raving about it after the movie and the kids will be like, what? What? it's a kid's movie, what's, what's wrong with you? But much like the Pixar films that really engage a, a, a big audience, you know, a broad audience, rather than the kid's movie that you take to and it's more like, I'm just going to have a one and a half hour nap and the kids can watch this one. <laughs> yeah. The Wild Robot is absolutely stunning, really funny. Um, it's got an ecological angle to it. Uh, super excited about that movie. Yeah. And I know that the book has been a huge seller worldwide. So there's already that built in audience for it. Oh, Brent, one other film I must mention for the school holidays is Encanto Rao Māori, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the next film in the series that Pixar have been doing, you know, yeah, and Rao Māori yeah. for the local audience. Love that initiative. We're going to be showing that it kicks off just before the school holidays, but we will be playing some screenings through the school holidays also. And there's some really famous songs in that. They're going to sound great, aren't they? Absolutely. Cannot wait to hear that film. Really excited to be showing it. Always supportive of that initiative. And that'll be good too, because there's a whole lot of repeat visits to the cinema, right? Yeah. When you got more movies. Yeah. For the adults at the time, we'll have Thelma playing through. We've got Megalopolis, which is Adam Driver and Francis Ford Coppola's mega project that's taken them like 40 years to develop. That's actually releasing... Uh, late late September as well. And also we have The Substance, which I've talked about earlier. Dan, there's a few movies we want to talk about in October. October? Yeah. yeah I mean, it's actually not that far away. No, is. I know. The year's going so quickly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so as part of the school holiday lineup, we've got a little Australian film called Runt, which is also based on a book. A lot of films getting adapted from books for the school holidays this year. Um, it's about a young 10-year-old girl who's stray dog she wants to take to the crumpets dog show in london um and it's to save the family farm back in australia from decimation you know they have to give up the family farm because of drought so if she can win crumpets with her stray dog then she can save the family farm i think being an australian film too effectively it's a local movie right absolutely yeah. i think that's going to be an awesome one for for kids and for families also um another film that must not go without mention and is opening on october the 10th is a film called a mistake it's from our local filmmaker christine jeffs uh, starring elizabeth banks as one of the world's great surgeons who makes a very small mistake in a surgery and the repercussions or what can happen from a small mistake and the butterfly effect that that can create from that. We actually did a lot of test screenings here at Matakana Cinemas as they worked through the editing process. So it's actually a film that's sort of literally very close to our heart. So really excited about opening that film and be on the lookout for some event style screenings around that one. Okay. Now one we need to talk about, I was a huge fan of the first one, is Joker. Yeah. And it, it seems like it's been ages since we had that Joker's movie and now the next one's coming out. Yeah, I think, was that film pre-COVID? Yeah, I think it was ages I ago, I think right? it was. And Todd Phillips, who directed that one and is directing this one, you might recall at the time people were going, Joaquin Phoenix, nah, Heath Ledger's the joke, the Joker, right? I mean, I'm, I have a soft spot for Jack Nicholson <laughs> yeah. as the Joker as well. But he absolutely killed it, right? He did. On that, in that film, he absolutely nailed it. So they brought him back and dun, 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 Lady Gaga is coming into this film as Harley Quinn as well. Uh, Joker Folie Adieu is probably one of the most highly anticipated films of this year when you think about it, and probably for you as well, How you know, given how much you've said you loved that first one. Yeah, I'll look at, what I'm worried about though is musicals. Now, you know what I'm like with musicals, but I, I think maybe social media is spinning it the wrong way. I don't think it's going to be like a full-on sound of music, but it's, it'll be interesting how he weaves all that into the movie. Yeah, and let's put it this way you're going to go and see it, right? Yeah, You're not going to not see it. No. So you'll find out yeah. when you sit down in the cinemas. It might be the turning point in my life where I become someone who loves musicals, Dan. Yeah. Look, I've got to say that on paper, I cannot see this film going south. No, no. Todd Phillips coming back with yeah. Joaquin Phoenix, Ed and Lady Gaga. Yes. They did a phenomenal job on the first film. I can't see them letting us down. No, and the footage I've seen again, it looks it looks great. You know, it's beautiful, and you go, okay, if he can make this work, then I'm going to give him a big high five. Yeah, and I'm excited for you. Yeah, yeah. 